Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I have a crazy new princess dress planned which I will make from scratch again. If you haven't already make sure to click that subscribe button and ring the bell as well as following me on all my socials which will be linked below. I started with drafting a pattern on my dress form. On Instagram I already showed you a quick design I came up with which I'm using here as a guideline especially for seams and the overall shape of the bodice. With this project I want to show you a really cool technique on how I make really narrow strips of turned over fabric which I will be using as straps and for the lacing in the back. But more on that later on. So for this dress I'm draping a body type bodice with functional as well as decorative seams in the middle front middle front side, side, middle back side and middle back. So in total eight seams which I will put boning in later on to give the bodice more strength. When draping a pattern it is very important to mark every seam, every line that you'll need later on to correct a few bits and pieces. The first draped bodice is just the first idea which will take on its final shape after a few test fittings. This is also why I am using cheap cotton canvas for draping. If you'd like to see a more detailed video on how to drape patterns on a dress form, leave a comment down below and I will try my best to explain what I am actually doing here. It's kind of hard to explain because sometimes my movements just come organically and automatically and I'm not really checking a rule book and following some steps, but I do think there are some tips and tricks that I can share with you on draping. One trick which you can actually see me doing right now is cutting away excess fabric. Since the body is round and you are trying to imitate that shape with a flat fabric, you'll see that it's easier to cut away fabric that really does not let you reach areas you want to drape on. For example, the armhole or the neckline. After the draping is done, I take my fabric and measure the seams which will be sewn together later on. So the side seam and all the dividing seams in the front and back. I then continue to relocate the dart I had to add in the front into the dividing seam in the middle side front piece. Just cut into the seam of the dart and the dividing seam to change the position of the dart. You do this to prevent unnecessary lines in the finished garment which might disturb the overall look. By doing this you're not making the dress smaller or bigger, you're just relocating where you take out the dart. In this case I just fuse the dart with the dividing seam. I then proceed to cut out my corrected pattern to cut it out of the same fabric with one centimeter seam allowance. If you don't need to correct any dark position, you can skip this step and cut out your pattern with the seam allowance already included. I would advise though to copy your pattern to paper before you sew it together, because you'll have less trouble afterwards, believe me. I then continue to sew all the pieces together for a first test fitting. And here it is! I am pretty happy with the shape of the bodice, but out of experience I know that I will probably have to take it in a bit once I am working with my fashion fabric. But for now I am really happy with how it looks. In my sketch I created this unconventional skirt line which consists of six cutouts in the bodice. I made a stencil out of paper to mark the placements for each cutout. Once taken off of the dress form, I corrected all the positions of those cutouts on my mock-up. I ended up changing the angle more to an A-line rather than straight down. And this is when my pattern pieces started to look really 
funny. Don't you think this looks kind of like teeth? Anyways, I copied the corrections onto my original pattern pieces, which will be traced onto paper as well and continued prepping my fabric. Since the bodice is gonna be a structural piece, I needed to strengthen the rather light and kind of stretchy cotton crepe fabric I wanted to use beforehand. I went to my ironing table and pressed and pressed and pressed some non-elastic interfacing onto my fabric. Now be patient with this step and don't try to go faster by using steam. This will damage the glue on the interfacing and the fabrics won't fuse completely. Also make sure to make a test to see if the temperature of your iron is okay. I laid down two layers of cotton canvas and two layers of my strengthened cotton crepe to cut out my pattern pieces of my bodice. These two fabrics will be sewn together in the next step to have one thick Err, fabric to work with. And you can see the teeth here. You see them, right? It's teeth. Weird. <laughs> I cut out all the pattern pieces with one centimeter seam allowance. And there you go, you created some teeth. Let's make a bodice out of it. Before sewing the bodice together, I fused the cotton canvas and the cotton crepe by stitching around the pattern pieces. And those stitches will be in the seam allowance and therefore not visible. I do recommend using your biggest stitch though to just in case be able to easily open them later. And after all of these preparations, it's finally time to sew all the pieces together to one bodice. It's crazy how much time all the preparations take beforehand and you didn't even do anything and it's three days later. It's crazy. I added boning to different positions of the bodice, two in the middle front, one diagonally from the highest cutout point to the chest area, two in the front and back side pieces, and another diagonal one in the back. It's kind of difficult to explain, but you'll see the seams later in the finished piece. Make sure to always cut the boning pieces short enough, in my case minimum one centimeter less than the pattern pieces themselves, so that nothing will poke through once you turn everything inside out. I also made sure to iron the seams flat in between so that I won't have any problems with my further sewing nor with the boning that I will put onto the seams. After I finished sewing on the boning on one side of the bodice, I traced the placements onto the other side and fixed the boning into place there. Since the pen will be covered by boning anyways, it doesn't really matter which one you use, just make sure it doesn't show on the right side of your dress. And voila, the teeth ended up forming a bodice. I had some fabric pieces laying around from cutting, which I pinned to the dress to get an idea on how the skirt will look in the end. I was so happy, you guys. And here you can also see the boning seams that I put into the bodice. Next up, padding. Since this dress has a very dramatic back, which wouldn't allow me to wear a bra, I wanted to put some sort of padding into the bodice. I had this bra laying around, which I never wore, and I decided to cut out the low profile padding. This is just to prevent anything from showing and doesn't push or anything like that. I marked the position for the padding on the dress form and continued hand sewing it on. It's very important to just stitch through the cotton canvas and not the cotton crepe, because it would show on the right side. This 
way it will invisibly fix the padding to its position. So for some reason I didn't think filming the sewing process of the lining was necessary but I basically just used the same pattern pieces and cut off the root part of the teeth and then I continued to pin the lining with just a tad bit more seam allowance to the bodice to sew it all together. Now this is an important notice. If you sew a pattern which is 100% correct and checked and all is perfect, you would sandwich the sleeve strings in between the lining and the outer fabric. I didn't do this for this dress because I just didn't know how long to make them. I needed the lacing in the back to put it on first to know how long I would need to make the tubes for you know, the whole sleeves. But if you have someone to help you fit the bodice, this wouldn't be a problem and you could have made the bodice the correct way. Now for the tubing. So for the lacing and the sleeves, we're gonna make our own tubes. And I have a really, really cool trick for you guys, so keep on watching. Fold a long piece of fabric a lot of times, I did it about six times, and I measure about three centimeters. It doesn't have to be exact. Cut out a few strips and sew them together to create a really, really long strip. Take some strong wool and fix it to one side. This will be your help to turn the piece over. Lay it in the middle of the strip, fold it over and sew along the wool all the way to the end. Once you pull on the wool, the tube will turn inside out really easily. For the lacing in the back, I made about four meters, let's say, of this tube and it was just enough. So maybe make a little bit more if you try to recreate this dress. To turn the bodice over, cut away access seam allowance with a pair of zigzag scissors. This is also why I should have sewn the tubes for the sleeves already into the whole thing. I mean, how on earth do you want to turn something like that over? I had a pretty hard time, as you can see here, and all this would have been way easier if I had a tube to pull at. But I managed somehow, just, you know, you do it right, please. Next up are the eyelets for the lacing. So in my head I thought it was a brilliant idea to, instead of metal eyelets, which would have been done in say 30 minutes, sew all of my planned 16 eyelets by hand. Wow, <laughs> what a great idea. 
So I sat down with a cup of coffee and some good documentary on YouTube and started sewing. I used thick thread for this, which I folded to have double its strength and started framing the punched hole. Now, this is my first time doing hand-sewn eyelets, so don't be too harsh on me. But if you want to know how I did it, just watch closely as I am continuing to frame the punched holes like so. And if you want to have a more in-depth version of how I am making my own eyelets, just comment down below and I will be sure to make a tutorial on my version. With the bodice basically done, I continued cutting out the skirt. After measuring, the panels needed to be 110 centimeters long and minimum 60 centimeters wide. That is exactly what I ended up having left of my cotton crepe. In total, I used about 4 meters of this fabric. I folded my fabric 3 times so that I would end up cutting out 6 panels in total. I used my cutouts as guidelines, but I measured the curved hem and the side seams. I ended up cutting out only half of the whole thing and then folded it over so that I have a guideline to cut the other half. This is actually how the bodice ended up looking and this is the laced up back. It's so hard to take this thing off anything and anybody, believe me. But obviously it had to come off of the dress form to sew the skirt on, so that's what I'm trying to do there. I marked the middle of both the cutouts and the skirt pieces to know where to sew them on. I also marked where the bodice would stop and the skirt panels would meet to have an even look in the end. And now there is a lot of sewing, pinning, checking and more sewing. In the back panel, I needed to add an invisible zipper to be able to put the dress on. So I cut about 20 centimeters into the panel and pinned one side on. For sewing these kinds of zippers, I am using my invisible zipper foot. This is the one for industrial machines. There is the equivalent for normal machines too though. For all German speakers out there, I made a tutorial on my Instagram on how to sew invisible zippers into any garment. I'm recycling a zipper I took out of a dress I took apart and that's why mine is white. But obviously if you want to make a dress like that, choose a zipper that matches the color of your fabric. And this is what it looks after pressing. So the almost last task is to sew this panel piece 
into the whole dress and then only the sleeves are left and we're done. Okay, so I told you earlier that I couldn't measure the length for my tube sleeves. Now, I had my lacing though and was able to put it on so that it at least wouldn't fall off again. And I somehow was able to measure, I mean, what is that, right guys? And was able to finish this dress. I repeated the same method which I did for the lacing and I just made about 60 centimeters because you make one full length tube and then you cut it rather than two single ones. Since the bodice was obviously already done, I had to hand sew the sleeves in. Well, normally that you wouldn't do that. As I told you earlier, you would sandwich the tube in between. But in my situation, this was the best solution. So I did that and it ended up being fine. This is the finished dress and I am really, really happy with how it turned out and I hope you guys are too. I will put some videos of me wearing the dress in the end and if you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Check out all the links to my socials down below and I'll see you next time. Bye!